Welcome, everyone. I cannot believe that we are in week five already. We have already passed the point of no return. Today is Tuesday, so we are actually on the back end of the class. I hope that you are having a great experience. But remember, if not, please reach out to me. It's always easier for me to help you if you reach out before the something is due than after it's due. And that way I can try to help you as best as possible. So anyway, what I want to do is uh, give you some insights on how to do one of the assignments for this week. And that's the conversion of Fahrenheit to Celsius in which you're going to have to open up an input file, which is already given to you. And then you're going to be able to write to an output file after converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And you can see that the formula is here. Now, this is kind of a jumbo way of doing it. And the way I would normally do this is a little bit different. I would, instead of doing it with times 0.05, what I would do is I would do it exactly like this. I would do the put in parentheses Fahrenheit minus 32. And then I would put times and then I would put in parentheses 5.0. Notice I said 5.0 divided by nine. That's the way this formula was written. And that would obviously be the C. So you'd have to put the C first in here. There's many different ways to do it. This is just my way of doing it. So however way you do it, as long as it works, is fine. But you always want to make sure that your files and your formulas and everything is clear. That's why I recommend using parentheses all the time. So let's just take a look at the starter that I have in here for the temperature in here. So I've added a couple things up top in here. You're going to need all of these. So you, obviously you need IO stream, you need F stream. And what I want to do is make sure you understand that you're going to need CMath because you're going to be rounding things off and you need CMath in order to round. And then the string you're going to need, uh, if you want to have a string function or anything like that, you definitely want to make sure that you have string. But anyway, if you do something, and let's say that we have an issue declaring a string. So let's just take a simple thing here. I've commented this out namespace in here. Well, what I can do is I want to declare a variable called string, and I'm going to call it city, and I'm going to sit there going, now, I always initialize everything. I am the initialization person of the year. Notice that string is there. So you have a couple options here. You can do uh, what is really not recommended because there's a lot of extra typing, is you can type std, and all of a sudden that takes care of that, but you don't really want to do that. So you can also do using std string. So now every time you use a string, you don't have to worry about it. Or you can do what we allow here, although it's really not recommended. It's really not recommended to use using namespace standards. Really recommend to have all your declarations that you're going to use in there up top and then just add as you need them. So we have city and we're going to need a uh, temperature. And so one of the things you're going to need is uh, Fahrenheit temperature and the Celsius. Now, this is the way I declare two variables of the same type. A lot of people will do this and I'm just going to do um, C and F so I don't have to type it out. Then I'll show you the way I would do it. So I would do C and a lot of people do C and F and that's it. I'm not a big fan of that. I like to have everything on a separate line. So the way I declare two different variables of the same data type or three different variables, I stand here and I just hit the enter key and it goes on the next line. And then I will type in Celsius, assuming I can spell it. And I like to initialize everything. So notice that I have 0.0. .0 and not just plain zero. The reason for that is the compiler, depending upon which one you have, may take that as an integer and not a floating point or a decimal. So in this particular case, I actually made a mistake and I'm working in reverse. So let's get rid of that there. And now we'll do Fahrenheit. Hopefully that I can spell this correctly. I'm gonna give it a try. 
we'll do fair and height and we'll equal that to zero. So that takes care of that. Now what we need to do is we need a way to open our file. So because we've included fstream, that gives us opportunity to use an input file and an output file. So I'm gonna show you how to do the input file and then you can work on the output file on your own. It's really fairly easy. So I'm going to do I and file stream and I'll just call it whatever I need to call it. So we're just creating a, an input file in here of IF stream in here, fairly easy. So let's just call it my in file. And we don't have to initialize it at this point in time, but we could if we want to. But here's what we want to do here is we want to use my in file. And then as soon as you hit the period, notice all the things that are open for you. So we want open, close, and all these other things. So let's just go to open, because we obviously need to open the file. So what I want to do here is I want to put in the name of the file. So I'm going to copy this from what I already did, because I know I will not spell it right. So give me one second. And let's open this up here. And the very first thing I'm going to do is check to see if the file is open. So I'm going to make a mistake in the spelling. And then you can see what's going on. So let's just go if. So what we're basically saying, if not in file or it really doesn't open, let's just go if not my in file then let's just print out a nasty message. See out, file not found. And then, so what we're gonna do here is make sure it's not found because I'm gonna spell it wrong. And then I'm gonna show you the easiest way to work your magic in here. So let's go and choose this, let's run it. And we should get file not found. We'll find out. I have not tested it. Let's see what happens. And look at this. File not found. Well, that's not exciting. So let's go and change this back to the proper one. And see what happens. And we did not get that message. So that's good. So now what we need to do is just read them one at a time. So what we need to do is put in a loop. So let's put an else statement in here. So this is good if we got here. And then what we wanna do is just read the file. So you're gonna read the file basically the same way you would read something from the keyboard, but instead of using C in, you're gonna use the actual file handle, which is the input file. So we'll start off real easy. And what we want to keep doing is let's just read one, one thing and see how that works. So let's just write my input file and zoom back and spell it. And then what we'll do is put in city. And since we're reading from a file, it's no big deal to do this, um, and actually, let me reverse that. And it's no big deal to have two input on the same line because you're not asking for user input, so you're not gonna really confuse them at all. And then we have, uh, we're reading in Fahrenheit, so we'll do Fahrenheit. And then let's just do C out, city, and we'll do a space, and then we'll do Fahrenheit, and we'll do end line, and we will see if this actually works. So let's try this one time and see how we're doing. And then we'll put it in a loop.
and we got Toronto and 47. Well, that's pretty good. Just to make sure it wasn't dumb luck, let's go and see if we can get the first two records. And let's try it again and see how we're working. Then I'm gonna show you how to get the file to exist in here. So we have, let me bring this over here. So now we have Toronto 47 and Lima 66, so that's good. So how do we get away from the file not found error? So what you wanna do is copy your Fahrenheit temperature.txt or whatever you name it into the same folder as where your, your CPP file is. So how do I know how to do that? Well, if you go into your file, assuming you use Visual Studio, and you do save CPP as, then all you have to do is copy this right here, the, the top over here, the file folder that's there. And then when you go and save it, just save it into here. So there's one thing you need to do though. Um, you wanna add this, and it's not always required, but it's a good idea. Let's uh, right click on here and you're going to add, and you're gonna click on existing item, and this should already be there. So you're gonna put in this, the first time I did it, I had TXTX and it didn't work, then I realized what I did, so I just copied it over. So notice that it's in here, so you're gonna add this file to it, to your project, and then you're good to go. So now how do we get to the point where we can keep reading? Well, I'm going to leave that to you, but I will give you this little area here. And I think I deleted the bracket. So how do we know if we're at the end of the file? So what you, all you have to do really is put it in a while loop. And there are other ways of doing it as well. But what I would do here is just make it simple because we're gonna keep reading it so basically what this is saying is while in my input file and then we're going to do let's see we have a city and then we're reading temperature and of course i am reversing this And then we want Fahrenheit. Actually, we do. We want Fahrenheit is correct. And we'll just print everything out and let's see how that works. And then I'll give you a little bit of hint on how to do the temperature conversion. So let's go and do C out, city. And we'll do a space, and then we'll do Fahrenheit. And let's see if that reads all of our records. And let's give it a try, and of course we need our return. And let's give it a try and see what happens. And we are missing an end line, so I'm not even gonna show you this. Let's go and put our inline here. Now, you probably heard me in my other videos say, do one thing, check it. Do one thing, check it. And there's a perfect example why. So it's really easy to fix. So now we have our temperatures and our cities all nice. So remember what I was saying in it. Let's see if we can go back to where the formula is. And right here. So we have F minus 32, and I'm going to make a screenshot of that so I can give you a little bit of insight on how to do that. I'm bringing in my snippet tool. And I'll take this over here. So let's go back to Visual Studio. And this is the way I would make my conversion. So I'm just gonna do C equals, and then in parentheses, 
Obviously, C is Celsius and F is Fahrenheit. F minus 32. And then I would do times 5.0 divided by 9. Now, you do not want to... Uh, you, you do not want to make, you don't want to do five by nine because then you're going to get something that's not correct in here. And that's all you really have to do. You can do it whatever way that you want. Uh, students in other classes have used um, times five divided by nine, but you want to make sure that you're in good shape in here. As long as you have one of these as a doubler or a float, you're fine. So we're going to get an accurate reading in here. And then you just need to open up the output file you need to check to see if it exists, the same thing, uh, basically what we're doing in here. And then all you have to do instead of reading it from it, you're going to write to it, which is pretty much the exact opposite of what we're doing here. Here we're reading. And in the other way, all you want to do is print it out in here. So that's all there is to it. Um, I hope this is going to be an easy assignment for you to do. I look forward to grading them. And if you have any issues, uh, please let me know. So have a wonderful, wonderful day.